Hello everyone, welcome back to another theatre vlog. Tonight I'm off to the Menier Chocolate Factory to see Barnum, as inspired to book this trip after seeing The Greatest Showman at the weekend, but I'm going into it knowing that it's probably not going to be similar. <laughs> or it might be, I don't know, but I'm going into it thinking it's gonna be something completely different because I feel like that'll help. I've not been to the Menier Chocolate Factory in a long time. I feel like the last visit was Funny Girl and that was ages ago, and it was quite pricey. I booked through Get Into London Theatre, the like January sale, because the cheapest clear view seat was 39.50 from the Menia, and Get Into London Theatre had seats at 40 pounds and they were discounted from the top price seats. So I thought, why not? I'll just pay 50p more and know that I've got a discounted better seat. So yeah, I'm really excited. Um, I've not seen the Menia in the round before, which is how they're doing it for Barnum and the cast is pretty good, so I'm really excited. I've come to the money a bit earlier. It's currently 20 past seven because I've been told that some stuff happens in the bar area. Jesus, that's aggressive. Um, yeah, some stuff happens in the bar area before the show, so I've been told not to go straight into the auditorium and to instead hang around a little bit, so. <laughs> That's what I'm gonna do. I wouldn't normally get here like this early, especially when I'm on my own, because I just feel like a bit of a plonker. Just kind of sat on my own. But yeah, I'm intrigued to see what's gonna happen. Um, yeah, just had a really nice afternoon. So very, very happy and very excited to see the show. Also, London, man, all of the sounds. so much. Would you please place your hand out like this? Now, madam, do you have any trap doors in your hand? No? No? Okay, well, I'm going to place the coins in your hands. Right there. We're going to cover them up, and if you could please close your hands so I can't get in there, okay? I'm going to take those coins out, and I'm going to place them in there. Did you see them go across? No? Did you feel me go in and take them? No? So they should still be in there, right? I mean, this has never worked before, so be a miracle if you get now. Uh, please, could you open up your hand? And met Oh my god. <laughs> so, would you look at that? Right there. Cool, right? What they do is keep your arms right Alright. Where is it? It's good, right? Also, when it be involved in it, Keep your eye on it. It's alright, it's alright. I didn't know either. I always do that, but then I'm like, wait, I actually don't know where it is. 
We've got the ace of one, two. Keep your eye on the ace. Ready? Where's the ace? Great. Three, two goes there, two goes there. Hello. We're trying to find the ace. Where do we put the ace? Come on, the ace is in the middle. Keep your eye on it. All right? On the ace. Where is it now? Right? Where is it now? 100%? Yeah? No. So maybe it's there, right? It's actually somehow troubled. Anyway, the ball goes into the cup? Yeah. Is it still in the cup or now in my pocket? What did I do, huh? It's probably in the cup still. It is not in the cup, it is in the pocket. But now the ball goes back into the pocket and with a bit of magic, I'm gonna send the ball up my arm. It's in my shoulder. It's in the other shoulder. It goes down the arm and it's in the cup. Hand or pocket? Pocket. Oh, it's not in the hand. It's not in the pocket. It's not in the pocket. Oh my! How did that happen? It's in the cup. Who knows? Well done. Who knows? It's magic. What a fact. Oh, yeah. Thank you very much. Yeah, I'm enjoying the show. Thanks. Oh no! Hello everyone, welcome back to the chatty section of the video. As you saw, I went to see Barnum at the Menier Chocolate Factory. And I need to talk about the programs first of all, because I love the programs at the Menier Chocolate Factory. This was four pounds and it's lovely. As you can see, um, it's quite obviously, it's taller than a normal program, like a little one. Um, but they're just always so nicely designed and it's got information um, about obviously the cast. I'm showing it to you at a really odd angle. Yeah, the cast and the songs, everyone involved and then information on the show and the people involved and there's no adverts. There's no adverts in this. And yeah, it's just four pounds and it's like so beautifully created. And I just wanted to say that because sometimes it really annoys me that you can pay crazy amounts for a program at the theatre and it's just full of adverts. Unless you buy the souvenir brochure, which has like less adverts, more actual content. So thank you, Many a Chocolate Factory, for making a beautiful program. Thanks. <laughs> anyway, that's my first spiel of the video done. So I booked Barnum because I saw The Greatest Showman last weekend. I'd been wanting to see Barnum anyway, but that was kind of the push that I was like, I need to book tickets. I really need to see that soon. So I did. Uh, I think I briefly mentioned it in the video, but I'll go over it again. I booked my tickets with Get Into London Theatre. It's a January sale that goes on sale 
in January, obviously. I think it's up until the 4th of February. I'll link it in the description. The Many Hair Chocolate Factory isn't really cheap when it comes to tickets, but that's fine. And with this show in particular, I knew that there were a lot of restricted view seats and I didn't want to be in a restricted view seat. So yeah, the cheapest clear view seat was 39.50 and Get Into London Theatre had uh, the top price, well, the £47.50 seats discounted at £40. So I thought I'll book that and then I know I don't really have to worry about the view. With shows that I've seen at the Many a Chocolate Factory before, it's just been, um, I think the phrase is end on so you know just like a normal theater where it's like that and then you're facing the stage but with barnum it's in the round so yeah that's another thing i was worried about i heard that there were some pillars and i just wanted to have a clear view unfortunately my view wasn't as clear as i thought it was going to be there were still pillars blocking like some parts of the show but they've been very clever with the direction of this show in that for the most part throughout the entire show it's played to kind of all sides of the audience there's always something that you can see there were just a few little moments where my view was blocked but thankfully i didn't have people sat right next to me so i could sort of shuffle along a little bit here and there to move myself to see what was going on it wasn't detrimental to the story i didn't miss anything important but you know, it is a bit annoying to pay 40 pounds and still have your view blocked slightly. So as I mentioned, I booked Barnum having seen The Greatest Showman, which is a story about the same guy, P.T. Barnum, but they're different stories, like really different stories. And I went into it fully expecting that. And I'm glad that I did, because I think if I'd gone into Barnum thinking, this is gonna be like The Greatest Showman, then I wouldn't have, not that I would have been disappointed, but you know, it would have thoroughly confused me. Act one follows a sort of similar storyline to The Greatest Showman, but then act two is totally different. So that was exciting in a way to not know what was gonna happen. I'll run through some of the cast members quickly. So Barnum was played by Marcus Bridgestock. Cherry, that was another thing that confused me because in the film, like The Greatest Showman, sorry, there's gonna be a lot of drawbacks to The Greatest Showman. But yeah, she's called Charity, Barnum's wife. Uh, Charity, but in this she was Cherry. And at some points I was confused. I was like, is he calling her Cherry, like a nickname? But then I bought the program at the interval and I was like, no, that's Cherry. <laughs> Cherry was played by Laura Pitt-Pulford, who I'm obsessed with, like I'm so obsessed with her. Jenny Lind, the opera singer, was played by Celinda Schoenmacher. And I also knew Harry Francis, who plays Tom Thumb. So, uh, and there was a couple of other familiar faces as well, particularly Bethany Huckle, who I recently saw, I say recently, it was ages ago now, in Half a Sixpence. Um, and also Rosie Fletcher, who played the concert master. I basically, <laughs> her and Bethany, I was like, I really recognize those faces. Where do I recognize them from? And then Bethany, I was like, half sixpence. And with Rosie, it was only when I looked in the program and saw that the only thing I could have seen her in was Wicked a few years back and she was a swing. So I was like, wow, she must have been like so recognizable and so prominent on stage. I, I must have seen her in Wicked. And for me to just remember her so clearly, I don't know, I just wanted to say that because I think that's pretty amazing that a performer can stand out to you so much that you just, you, you know that you know them, you know? You know you've seen them in something. Um, I just thought that was pretty nice. As I mentioned, I'm obsessed with Laura pitt Pulford. I just think she is so incredibly talented. There's something about her presence on stage that I am just in awe of. Um, I'm really lucky to have seen her in quite a few shows now. And I don't think I've ever properly met her. I think I'm just a bit too scared. I know that sounds really silly. I want to say that her presence is a bit like intimidating, but not in terms of like, she doesn't, cut. she comes across as a really lovely person. I don't know, I'm too nervous. Like I feel like a fangirl around her. So I'm probably just not gonna embarrass myself and keep at a distance, just enjoy her from the audience. <laughs> she was wonderful in this show though. And it's funny, the character of Cherry, Charity, uh, it's very different in this story of Barnum. It was really nice to see her on stage again. Um, I, I'm, I'm always excited when I see her cast in things and yeah, I, it will make me want to go. So <laughs> another highlight of the show for me was Celinda Schoenmacher as Jenny Lind. When I saw The Greatest Showman, going back to that, I was really annoyed because obviously they they say Jenny Lynn, she's the most famous opera singer. 
And then in the film, there was no opera or anything. And then Celinda covered that bass very well in Barnum. Um, she has a beautiful voice. I think the last thing I saw her in, it was probably Les Mis. Actually, it might have been Phantom of the Opera. One of them. She's just got a beautiful, beautiful voice. The character of Jenny Lind was completely different in Barnum to what I was, like, to what I'd seen in the film. Um, she was really, really funny in Barnum. And obviously, Celinda's voice is beautiful. So when they were saying that she's an opera singer, you were like, yeah, she's an opera singer because listen to that voice. Like, it's just stunning. And yeah, it was lovely to see her in like that sort of closer venue. Obviously, the Menia is not huge and when it's in the round, so everything is happening quite close to you. It's really fun to go from seeing someone on a big Western stage to being like meters away from them. That's really fun. Talking about being so close, that's something I loved about this show. It was so like immersive in a way. There was so much going on all the time. As I mentioned, at some points, the sight lines weren't fantastic, but especially in like the big ensemble scenes, there was just so much going on. At moments, it was a bit overwhelming because you just needed about 10 eyes to watch everything. There were so many amazing things going on. And I really feel like if I can, I want to try and see this again because there's just so much to pay attention to. How do I even say this? Like the way they did all the circus performance, that's how I want to say it, mind blowing. So incredible. Like they were using fire, then they were using juggling, people were being thrown around. And when I say thrown around, like I literally mean thrown around. I'll insert some rehearsal footage that's been posted on YouTube because you are like, it's insane. Like there's literally one moment where a girl is pretty much like thrown towards the audience. And I genuinely saw people like jerk back because they were scared that she was about to fly onto them. But the way they were doing all of this and with such confidence, like, I didn't worry at all about any of them. Absolute pros, it was amazing to watch. It was also really funny as well. I know I keep jumping back and forth, but before the show, as I mentioned, um, a friend had told me to stay in the bar and not go straight into the auditorium because stuff was happening in the bar. As you would have seen in some of the clips, like there were performers running around initially, and then um, some of the girls came out and they were doing like card tricks in the bar area. And yeah, it was just really fun to, to feel like you were already in the atmosphere of Barnum and you were having magic performed in front of you. Uh, it was just really cool. It was really, it was a really exciting experience. And then even when going into the auditorium, I was sat towards the end of a row and because obviously they have kind of decked the theater out like a sort of circus tent, there were some posts that were leaning up as if they were supporting the roof. One of the performers was asking me that if uh, he was like, the post, it might, it might come down, are you, are you able to hold it up if if that happens? And I was like, yeah, sure, I'll do that for you. And he was, and then he was demonstrating the different ways that I could hold the post up. And it was just really funny to have that bit of banter before the show. And obviously they're in character, they're pretending like it's real. And I was kind of joking back, pretending as well that it was real. It was just really funny. Going back to some of the cast members, as I mentioned, Harry Francis, I've seen in shows previously. Uh, he's ridiculously talented, like so, so talented. He played the role of Tom Thumb. Uh, it's obviously the smallest man in the world. And it was really clever the way they did this. Um, initially he was part of the ensemble and then obviously went into his Tom Thumb character. He initially had a puppet of Tom Thumb and that's how you were introduced to obviously the size of him. And then the next scene after that, it was just Harry on his own, no puppet, but he had this massive book to obviously show the size difference between him and well, everything else basically. And I just thought that was so clever. I love it when theatre does these imaginative crazy things. It's kind of like when I saw Pinocchio the other week and getting that size difference. It was just really fun. And then Harry, he's such an insane dancer. So his whole Tom Thumb bit, it, oh, he just really got to show off and it was amazing to watch. I found the casting of Marcus Bridgestock as Barnum really interesting. I don't know. I, I think I'd vaguely heard of him before this, but he's not someone that I would like 
Booker show because of and I'd heard some mixed things about him and I have to say sadly I do agree. He's I think he's mainly a comedian and he was a fine actor in this. His singing voice was also just fine and that's kind of how I felt about it really. I always feel bad when I'm not saying something positive about people but I also don't want to um I, I don't want to be dishonest and I it would be weird for me to just brush over it, wouldn't it? And not mention anything about the Barnum character. Um, I thought Barnum, in terms of the character in this, obviously, version of, what's the word I'm looking for? Like an interpretation of P.T. Barnum, who I will be reading up more on now because I'm, I'm intrigued. Uh, a lot of conflicting opinions about this, especially with The Greatest Showman being out as well. I don't know, I just wasn't hugely blown away by Marcus's portrayal of Barnum and I'm just a little bit confused <laughs> as to that casting choice. Also I, I posted this on Twitter so if you follow me on Twitter you might have already seen this but um, I said that I've never felt anxiety in a theatre like watching Marcus Bridgestock trying to get across a tightrope when he very easily could have fallen straight into audience members. <laughs> this is why I didn't do any interval chatting because I was still really anxious afterwards. Like my hands were so clammy and I just couldn't deal with it. <laughs> it was so intense. Yeah, they they obviously pulled this tightrope across the middle of the, uh, the stage area and he attempted it twice and couldn't do it, which is fair enough. I can't imagine that walking a tightrope is easy at all. Um, and then he had to get someone to help him on the third time around. And he was he was singing as well at the same time. So I was very impressed at him for like being able to get at least halfway across on this tightrope while also singing, while having that added pressure of an audience. So yeah, sadly I wasn't blown away by him as Barnum, but the show as a whole was so, impressive the creativity of it the the ensemble oh my goodness like go for the ensemble and the experience of it because it's absolutely bonkers i loved that like watching the ensemble so i say i need to go back again because there was too much to watch overall i had a really great time and i would highly recommend that you try and check barnum out at the many a chocolate factory i know it's been on tour previously but i can't imagine that seeing it in a tour production where it's like a normal audience set out i can't imagine that it's as exciting as seeing it in the round um, I think that's a very unique experience, especially in quite an intimate theater. It's definitely worth seeing it here. If you've already been to see Barnum at the Menier Chocolate Factory, or if you saw it on tour or anywhere else, I would love to know. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. If you've enjoyed this video, do give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you'd like to see more of me in the future. I make a lot of theater content, so if you enjoy theater, it might be worth you sticking around. I hope you're all doing really well, and I will see you in my next video. Bye.